was a Cinderella Sweet 16 team last year, and the Shockers faithful have the fever. They camped out outside Thursday night for the right to camp out inside last night, and they've been filling Coke Arena for three hours, ready to watch their Shockers take on the top team in the Missouri Valley Conference, Southern Illinois. presented by cars.com and there are great matchups all over college basketball today but no building will be louder than coke arena here at wichita state they are back at home to meet the top team in the missouri valley conference southern illinois the salukis are the highest ranked team in the conference they have an rpi of 12th overall wichita state though has won three in a row to get back to 500 and this would be a huge win for the shockers if they want to stay alive for an at-large bid hi again everyone i'm bob with and here and we have a lot to talk about today, Tim, as we take a look at a matchup that features two teams in the Missouri Valley Conference, a conference that now is fourth overall in the RPI, ahead of the Pac-10, ahead of the Big East, ahead of the Big 12. They're vastly underrated, Bob, especially when you consider that seven of the top 90 teams in the country are Missouri Valley Conference, but nobody in the top 25 in the polls. But let's focus on just a terrific matchup out here. What you have is SIU is one of the most physical, tough defensive teams in all of college basketball against a team that loves the perimeter. They shoot the jump shot, very good off the dribble. I can promise you this is going to be a hotly contested game. And two guys that if they lived up to Tim McCormick standards as big men, they'd be doing quite well uh, Star Watch. Randall Falker and Kyle Wilson. Yeah, a couple of big guys with different styles. Randall Falker, a premier power game, and the Shockers, Kyle Wilson, scores from all over the court. As we check our starting lineups, and for Southern Illinois, according to Chris Lowry, Jamal Tatum has stepped up as a senior and really embraced his role as the star and the focal point of the Salukis team. Uh, Jamal is a killer off the dribble, and it sets up that beautiful jump shot. And speaking of beautiful, what an atmosphere it is here at Coke Arena. This place is rocking, and it has been for quite some time. The students have been filing in for the past three hours, as we showed you a moment ago. They slept outside in the cold for the right to come inside in the warm the next night. Two nights of camping out, but they watch their team fall behind by an early two as Randall Falker slips inside. And Falker is playing not hurt, but ill. He actually has been dealing with a stomach virus that kept him laid up a couple of days ago. He practiced briefly yesterday. And he is getting the start today. We'll see how many minutes he is able to play as Wichita State keeps it alive on the offensive glass. Bradley stripped away, though, by Brian Mullins. Tatum carried the first turnover, and it goes back to the Shockers. Chris Lowry in his third year, the first coach to ever win 20 games in each of his first two seasons at Southern Illinois, and the youngest head coach in the tournament the last two years, only 34 years old. Uh, and they love him in Carbondale. He was a point guard in the 90s and led his team to three NCAA berths. Uh, check out this defense. This is as good as it gets it. A lot of pressure Ds play a short shot clock. This is a defense that plays the full 24. Breyer went down the lane and was hit with an offensive foul called against Wichita. Speaking of Wichita State, Mark Turgeon in his seventh up, year, 69-51 and 51 overall here at Wichita State, the Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year last year, and he's won 20-plus games three years in a row. And remember, last year had a chance to leave for either Arizona State or Oklahoma, and he could have caught that pass right there. A little errant. <laughs> That's what happens, though, when when you come into an environment like this. This is as loud as you're going to find. These people are passionate about their team. Well, they should be. When you think about what has been accomplished by this conference, as Wilson seals inside, and it's really amazing the, the numbers that this conference has put up, especially with some impressive out-of-conference wins. Young goes coast to coast and lays it in after Wilson turned it over at the other end. The first pair for Tony Young in the first four points scored by Southern Illinois. And, and there's the bionic man on the ball. Brian Mullins plays a full court press the entire game all by himself. Wichita State has missed their first two field goal attempts. Tough fade away and unable to convert Kyle Wilson. Pushed off the blocks by Matt Shaw. Falkert with a
Mendes back to the basket, feeds Mullins. He thought about a three and instead resets to Tatum with 15 to shoot. Yeah, great idea to load up Falker inside. Yeah, that's just a lazy pass right there, Bob. You've got to take the baseline dribble and put it on the floor. Ryan Martin stepped in front to help create the turnover. Now it's Wilson at the other end. Foul. Plus an extra. So Wilson will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play as he gets the shockers on the board. Oh, yeah, the Dirk Nowitzki of the Missouri Valley Conference. He can go inside and out. Made just a great comment about how good the defense is in the Valley. He said last year they went to the Sweet 16, and he actually felt like the defense was so much easier to score against in the NCAA than when he plays in conference. He could get whatever he wanted in the tournament. He completes the three-point play. That's an amazing statement. When you think when the stakes are at their highest, the defense would be at its toughest, but not so, at least in terms of what Kyle Wilson perceived the defense to be like in this conference. Yeah, Three-quarter front on Falker. Good idea. A lot of help is available. Walker into the corner for the young three. No good. And Wilson has the rebound. Kyle Wilson played one heck of a game a few nights ago when we were watching Wichita State with a big road win against Northern Iowa. He had 24. And it was the second consecutive road win for Wichita State. They spent most of January on the road. Now Thomason inside can't connect. Falker the rebound, but Wichita State, if they're going to make a run to an at-large bid, they have at least the chance to do it at home. Most of their games the rest of the way in this building. Yeah. Turnover, a little careless. That's a couple quick ones by Tatum. And you talked about the, the uneven season for Wichita State. They were 9-0 and oh at one point, ranked number 8 in the country. And listen to this road victory list that they had. Syracuse, George Mason, LSU, and at Wyoming. And Mark Turgeon feels like by going four straight Saturdays against that kind of competition, it really wore his team down. And then they lost eight of their next 11. Geary has the ball knocked away, out off Young, so it stays with Wichita. Plenty of time on the shot clock, 22 seconds. And again, I don't know that the point can be driven home enough how little respect this conference gets when you look at the way the polls view the teams as opposed to the RPI. The Southern Illinois is in the top 12 in the country, 11th overall to be exact, in the RPI. And you're in, they're in the others receiving votes category in both national polls. You know why? Because people aren't paying attention. They're they are one of the top 15 teams in my estimation. A steal. And heading the other way, losing it. Matt Shaw couldn't hold on. And it goes back over to Wichita State. You know, one of my favorite things about the Salukis, though, is that, to me, they have a little arrogance. And, and I like that a lot. It, it comes with road success going to the NCAA, they just feel like they're better than everybody they play. And coming into this environment, you really need that big boy attitude like, bring it on, guys. We're not afraid to play in your building. A couple of new backcourt players come on for the Shockers. Gal McKell, the freshman from Tel Aviv with the ball in the corner. Also, Wendell Freedom just came on. Inside Thomason, his shot blocked. Crowd thought there was a goaltending call, and it did look like a hand went up and made contact with the netting, not through the rim. Inside Walker, and he throws it down, and Illinois State doubles up their lead. It's 6-3. Yeah, with respect to Eric Coleman and at Northern Iowa, and Anthony Tolliver, who's really good at Creighton, to me, Randall Falker is hands down the best big guy in the MVC. He rebounds, he defends, he's a number one shot blocker, about 13 or 14 a game. Wilson goes to the line. So Randall Falker picks up the foul, although Southern Illinois with an early 6-3 lead. Randall Falker, as we said, for the Salukis, suffering with a bit of a stomach virus. He looks good early on. He has four of their first six. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Cars.com. Find the right car for you. Cars.com. 
basketball presented by Cars.com. Southern Illinois with the early 6-3 lead over Wichita State and a good start for Randall Falker. Yeah, I did a little film study yesterday and, and found out that Southern Illinois is one of the best teams in all of college basketball at the post entry. Watch the seal and deal. There's nothing along the baseline side. And when you've got a big man like Randall Falker that has some Dallas Clark-like hands, you can throw it, he's gonna go get it, secure the ball, and finish it. And to give you an idea how good he is, when they played in Carbondale against the Shockers, Falker had a sore ankle, he had sprained it the night before, he was in foul trouble that limited him to only 23 minutes, he still had 20 points on six of seven from the field. A bit sloppy early on for the Salukis, five turnovers in the game's first five minutes as Wilson Goes to the line and rims out the first free throw, an 84% free throw shooter, a transfer from Illinois. You made mention of how when he got to the NCAAs, he found it to be a little bit easier going, at least defensively, than what he saw in the Missouri Valley Conference. I thought it was funny when he told us that when he transferred from Illinois to Wichita State, everyone looked at him saying, well, you're leaving the Big Ten to go to the Missouri Valley Conference. What are you doing? Yeah. And then that next year, he's in the Sweet 16, <laughs> and Illinois is out in the first round. Yeah, he, he, was, he found that ironic. He was part of that class with Dee Brown, Darren Williams, and James Augustine. Walker slips one outside. A catch by Green, and now Young rising and knocking it down. So Tony Young, who last year was a first-team All-Missouri Valley Conference selection, last year he averaged about 15 points per game, down to nine points per game this year, but Jamal Tatum has more than picked up that scoring load for the Saluki. We've had enough conversations with Valley coaches. How many of them reference the fact that they think that the Salukis get away with a lot of fouls? That they're, they're so aggressive on the perimeter. Mikel penetrates, draws contact, can't get the roll. No foul call. Young runs it down in the corner. And then it's fumbled out of bounds. Wesley Clemens had it and lost it. That's the sixth turnover for Southern Illinois. Wichita State with only four points through nearly six minutes, but that is indicative of the Salukis. They only average about 56 points per game allowed, best overall in this conference and one of the top defensive teams in the country. And as we look at some of those defensive numbers, well, this season, they're sixth. Last season, they're fourth. I mean, it's it's obviously wow. something that Chris Lowry prides him and his team on very much. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I don't think they're Salukis. I think they're more like Rottweilers the way they defend. <laughs> for it on the floor is Green, but Tyrone Green is called for the foul. Yeah. Very interesting start to this game because the Salukis feel like they're they're off to a quick start, but I, I, I'm concerned if I am a Southern Illinois fan because the referees are starting to call this a little closer, and if, if, if the Salukis can't attack on defense and get physical, that in the long term is really going to help Wichita State. Tony Young sits down as Brian Mullins comes back on. P.J. Kuznard up off the bench. He's about to come on for the first time as Wendell Freedom sits down. And Kuznard again playing with a dislocated thumb inside. Getting loose on the baseline is Ryan Martin. Beautiful feed from McKell. Doesn't take much to light the crowd back up here at the Coke Arena, does it? Oh, no. One backdoor cut, and all of a sudden it's Bedlam. Fifteen on the shot clock as Mullins resets. Mullins penetrates, sets up Falker. Got it. So Falker has hit his first three shots from the field, and he has six of Southern Illinois' ten. Down the lane goes Kuznar. Can't get the roll. And the rebound in traffic to Wesley Clement. Walker again the post. They're allowing him to go one-on-one, -on -one and he's more 
more than happy to take what's given. That time missed the jump hook over the top of Thomason. I think it's a great idea for the Shockers to try to hit quick in transition so they can avoid this very tough defense. Kell with the crossover. And now Bradley and Kuznar play catch. Now Thomason trying to return the favor to Falker. Instead, a cross-court pass and a dangerous one. Bradley went no look, and it was stolen by Mullins in the lane. Should have looked. <laughs> With it. Chris Lowry called Brian Mullins a true throwback point guard. Changes his style literally every game as necessary, except Tony Boyle took too many steps. And the top two teams of the Big 12 battle on ESPN tonight. AC Law and the Texas A&M Aggies take on Brandon Rush in Kansas. Coverage begins with college game day driven by State Farm at 8 Eastern. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV on ESPN at 9 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. And just like Southern Illinois, they're right up there at the top of the defensive rankings in the nation with Texas A&M. The Aggies have had a magnificent season on the defense Event. Yeah, Billy Gillespie, a protege of Bill Self, but I think that Kansas has too many weapons offensively. They will be able to score. Ryan Bradley has just come on for the first time. Kyle Wilson checking back in, double team, and took too many steps. 11.39 to go here in the first half. Wichita State behind on the scoreboard, but lit the crowd up a moment ago. Ryan Martin, a nice backdoor gun. For more rivalry-related video, log on to ESPN360.com or go to iTunes to download your favorite classic game. And Tim McCormick, there is a good rivalry game every night of the week this week. And what's wrong with the Buckeye parents that were upset with their Michigan daughter? I can't understand that. Yeah. Easy there, Wolverine guy. <laughs> Tatum from the baseline. Got it. Yeah, this game feels like 60 to me. Maybe, maybe 65 if it's really getting to get high octane in the second half. But the defense so far, 12 turnovers forced. And for Wichita State, they're shooting 22% from the field, whereas Southern Illinois is shooting it exceptionally well. They're six for eight. Aguirre, tough shot, foul. The foul will be called against Jamal Foster, who just came on for Southern Illinois. So that will put Sean Aguirre at the line. The junior from Denver with a hairstyle I'm, I'm thinking about. I might I might try. That might be my next move. Big hair, big game. And, and, and I, I love to watch players that are able to understand the growth process. Early in his career, I felt that Sean was more of a perimeter guy. He would roam the three-point line waiting for the ball to come to him. He's built his body. He knows where the weight room is on the Wichita State campus. And now, if he's not getting the ball, he'll go get it. And Mark Turgeon's quote to us about Sean Aguirre was, he's not only a good shooter and a good passer, but he makes us play better as a team because of how he defends, which I thought was interesting. His defense trickles all the way through the Wichita State group. Tatum got caught on the baseline. And you can see Tatum roaming the baseline, looking to get free. Aaron Bradley with the unenviable task of trying to stay with Tatum, and Tatum comes off a screen and works his way to the line. Matt Breyer officially called for the foul. Jamal Tatum is a player that loves the game. He, he passionately wants to get better. And I, I was talking to him a little bit earlier. I, I, I called him out. I said, I hear that you've been hanging out at the rec center at 6.30 in the morning. And, and he looked at me like I didn't think anybody knew about that. And he said, he said, yeah, he, he and a buddy of his, they get in there and they, they lift weights and they do ball handling drills and they shoot. Look at the three-point percentage. It was 29% for his career. This year, all of a sudden, 42. You watch his moves, and you can tell that Jamal Tatum is a worker. Tony Young comes back on for Joshua Bone. Jamal Tatum now with 1,455 career points. He is 11th all-time for Southern Illinois in scoring. Aguirre creates space and buries the 10-footer on the baseline, and it's a three-point game. A 
Aguirre with four points in the last two Wichita State trips. And the crowd making a lot of noise. These are two very dominant home teams. Shaw on the move. Finger roll goes off the window. Ryer put his head down like a fullback, got to the rim, and Martin draws the foul. Well, Matt Pryor looked like Marshall Falk. He just dipped his shoulder and went the length of the court. Uh, you, I can tell by all your football references that you're excited because tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday. I think every football fan is excited when Super Bowl Sunday arrives purely because it's finally here and you can just stop talking about it. Okay. Imagine if the Final Four was played on a Saturday and then two weeks from Monday they finally play the championship game. Bob, did just you know, get to it. Did, did you know that, that yesterday was the number one day of the entire year for television sales? I have mine ready. And I'm sure in my house right now you're on it. <laughs> Offensively, this is a trip where Falker needs the ball. He's off to a quick start. They're fronting him. They need to go inside. He came around the screen that time like lightning on the baseline, but Bradley did a good job to step up and stay with them. And then he misses the three, and Aguirre has the rebound. Aguirre bumped at midcourt by Tony Young. Crowd wanted a foul. In the Missouri Valley Conference, they let you get away with a hand check here or there, don't they? It's very There's physical. There's some bumping. Yep. Aguirre for three. And the rebound to Tatum. Uh, I'm going to say it again. They started the game inside with great success. Southern Illinois is in a little bit of an offensive famine because they're not going inside. Now it goes inside to Falker, and he's immediately double teamed, and he brings it outside. Now to Shaw at home yeah uh, good adjustment because if you're looking at the shocker defense if they have a flaw I think they're a little soft with their post defense so if they're gonna load up to deal with Falker that gives Shaw an opportunity to go inside Kuznar double team great pass to Martin and he missed the dunk to the floor they go and it's a held ball the possession arrow goes over to Wichita State the Shockers will have it when we come back. A moment ago, Ryan Mark with a chance to light up the building and miss the dunk. The Salukis with a seven-point lead over Wichita State, but the Shockers should have cut it to five a moment ago. Yeah, this is unacceptable. You're playing against one of the best defensive teams in all of college basketball. Your team is shooting 23%. That's the easiest basket they're going to have an opportunity to score the entire game, and they blew it. Walker out of the post. From the wing, it's Young. And the rebound tapped to Wilson. McKell tried to slip one through traffic to Thomason, and it was kicked by Shaw. So Wichita State, three for 13 overall from the field to go along with five turnovers, although it should be four for 13 as Ryan Martin just missed a wide open dunk. McKell on the baseline, tough pass and a nice catch by Thomason. Wilson, offensive foul. Falker stepped up, got position and took the charge. So the crowd here at Coke Arena, not happy with what they have seen so far. The Shockers trail by seven. Ballot basketball presented by Cars.com. Bob Shoes and Tim McCormick back at Wichita. The Shockers trail by seven. Yeah, Southern Illinois is the best help defensive team in the entire MVC. What they do is they're physical. Their rotations are razor sharp. I, I think they're a great recovery team, Bob, because they're, they're quick. They all can cover perimeter players and post, and there you saw right there, that's your center sliding over and taking a charge. Kyle Wilson tries to plead his case. Partner, it's not going to work. Largest lead so far for Southern Illinois is seven, and they have maintained that lead for the past minute and a half. 7.45 to go here in the first half. 67% from the field early for Southern Illinois, only 23% for Wichita State. Motion offense by the Salukis. Out of timeouts, they like to target a set player or mismatch. 
What happens to their offense now that Randall Falker's on the bench? Well, it goes to Jamal Tatum with five on the shot clock. Sets up Shaw for three. Got it. Shaw knocks down a triple off the feed from Tatum. Yeah, and how important is Matt Shaw? Their leading scorer in the non-conference has not hit double digits in his last five games. He scored the last seven points at a five-second call. Gal McKell turns it over as we check our stats track so far. And some of them are quite stark in favor of Southern Illinois. First of all, shooting percent. Well, th that's what they do, though. The, the turnover's a little bit high for both teams, and Southern Illinois is forcing missed shots. That's why they're leading the rebounding battle. And that's why they have a 10-point lead, the first double-digit advantage of the game. Tatum rises and fires. That one banks around and falls through. Did you hear glass? Mark Turgeon didn't. He calls timeout. Wow, a 13-point lead for the Salukis. What a start for Southern Illinois. And college basketball continues on ABC today. They have regional coverage. Catch either Tyler Hansbro in North Carolina taking on NC State or Bob Huggins' Kansas State team taking on Kevin Durant and Texas. Our coverage tips off at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. Check your local listings for the game in your area. And Kevin Durant in action later today against Kansas State. And his numbers stack up quite well with the other freshman sensation, Greg Oden. Oh, so many good big men that are freshmen. Thaddeus Young, and how about North Carolina later today? Brandon Wright is the new millennium Sam Perkins. Uh, Brandon Wright was the high school teammate of Joshua Bone, the newest backcourt freshman for Southern Illinois. Those two played together in Nashville at Brentwood Academy. <laughs> How do you like these numbers? They won four straight Tennessee State Championships. Last year, the runner-up for Mr. Basketball was Bone. <laughs> he lost to his teammate. It's not bad when you have the top two guys for Tennessee <laughs> Mr. Basketball on the same team. They should win four straight championships. Kuznar draws the foul. And a little bit of a sarcastic cheer on the part of the fans here at Coke Arena, but that's the seventh team foul against Southern Illinois, so that actually will put Kuznard on the line. Now, obviously, you're not going to count an offensive foul as a team foul, but there have only been three team fouls called against Wichita State, so I'm not sure how much of a gripe the fans here have as Kuznard hits the front end. This is the dilemma for Wichita State, is that they're playing hard on defense, but still Southern Illinois is scoring. This is not the kind of defense that you can make really strong comebacks against. That foul was called against Tony Young, his second, and he sits down. Normally it will be Mullins, Tatum, and Young in a three-guard alignment for the Salukis, but this is a very deep team. They have a lot of different lineup combinations that Chris Lowry can use. This crowd was nuts early, now they're silent. Oh, Mullins, nice bounce pass on the baseline. Offensive foul call. Tony Boyle is called for the charge. Defensively, Mark Turgeon says that, that this Shocker team is his worst defensive team, the, the worst that he has coached. But they really seem to be coming on at Northern Iowa. We had the game earlier this week, and I really thought that they played a very strong, help defensive game. Wichita State struggling to get some points on the board here in the first half. 5.41 to go in the first half. They have 11 points. Again, that is the calling card for Southern Illinois. They average only allowing 56 points per game. Number one in the Missouri Valley Conference. And in the top six in the country. Breyer has a lane to the goal. The shot partially deflected out to Kuznard for three. And he hits. How does he make that shot with a cast on his shooting hand? Dislocated thumb, one of the toughest players in all of college basketball. Mark Turgeon told us that he is a warrior that probably should not be playing. 
but that you just can't sit the guy down. And now he's out on the toughest guard on the floor in Jamal Tatum. So Kuznar not only hits at one end, but draws the most difficult defensive assignment at the other. Tatum on the move. Can't get a shot off. Shaw drives. Won't go. Blocking foul call. Thomason called for the foul. That's his first. And Matt Shaw goes to the line. Yeah, at 6'7", 235, and built like a lumberjack, he is the perfect complement to Randall Falker. He steps away, he makes jump shots, and, and is able to understand that that the defense is going to try to take away their post game, so he roams the perimeter in search of perimeter shots. Ryan Martin comes back on for Wichita. Tyrone Green back in for Southern Illinois. Last season, Matt Shaw shot 46% in conference games from three-point land. That set a Southern Illinois record. So he certainly can hit from the outside. But he has combined that with a power game this season, 11 points, six rebounds per game. And he has pushed the lead back to double figures for the Salukis at 11. Inside Wilson, hit, and he'll go to the line. And that time Shaw picked up the foul. Uh, this is as simple as I can put it. Here's the deal. Southern Illinois is the toughest and most physical team in the MVC. Can Wichita State handle that, that physicality? So far, they have not been able to, and that's why Southern Illinois has a strong lead. Shaw's second, and he will go to the bench as Foster comes back on. Bradley checks back in for the Shockers. Sean Aguirre sits down as Wilson tries to cut the lead back to single digits, and does so. Well, the shots seem to come a little bit easier for Kyle Wilson the other night at Northern Iowa than they have so far here in the first half against Southern Illinois. Northern Iowa does not defend like the Salukis. Mullins with 15 to shoot, gets a screen in the lane. Can't get it to go, but the weak side tip goes for Jamal Foster. Jamal Foster averages less than a point per game so far this season. He's already more than doubled his per game total with that tip in. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Breyer, back outside, Bradley for three. Rebound off to Mullins and a kick out to Tatum. Even though Falker has the flu, he's running the court very well so far. Mullins inside. Falker through the double team. And the rebound tipped over to Martin. Wichita State probably just needs to get to a total that has something with a two in front of it just to have a little bit of a mental edge going in the locker room at halftime. And there's a putback by Ryan Martin. They inch closer to 20 points. Here comes the crowd. They sense this is a moment with the lead cut back to nine that Wichita State might be able to get something going before halftime. seconds on the shot clock. Tatum with the pump fake, draws contact, and draws the foul. So, Karan Bradley is called for the personal, and Tatum will go to the line. When we come back, a moment ago, Kuznard helped out by Ryan Martin. That cut the lead back down to nine. tough game here in the first half in the Missouri Valley Conference and they're all tough in this conference aren't they look at where the Missouri Valley now ranks with the top power conferences in the RPI uh, it, it's incredible top to bottom that every team in the MVC has a 500 record or better and the featured game is going to be next Saturday as great visits Southern Illinois a great game in Omaha the first time it was it was a last second shot that they got the victory for SIU, and that was made by their point guard, Brian Mullins, so I would anticipate another close game. Well, here's the question I would ask you then, as Tatum tries to stretch the lead. 
and is unable to do so. And Southern Illinois is probably the perfect example with which to ask this question. How is a conference that is fourth overall in the RPI not have a team in the top 25 in either poll? It doesn't make sense because the Salukis have a very strong record overall, good non-conference victories, but I think that, that everybody looks at the BCS schedules and, and the conferences and says, well, they must be superior. I'm going to tell you this right now. From what I've seen in the first half, when I get my bracket in five weeks in one day, I don't care what their seed is or who they play. I am picking the Salukis to win in the first round. Wichita State won two games last year. This is a, a league that should absolutely send four, if not five, teams to the NCAA tournament. Kuznar comes up with the rebound off the green miss, and Wichita will try and cut it inside of 10 once again. I still feel like Wichita State, they have a chance in this game, is going to have to play a little bit more in transition because they just can't get an open shot against this defense. Tough fadeaway for Wilson, and the shots have been very difficult to come by for Kyle Wilson. Falker, though, picks up the foul as he grabbed Martin. So that loose ball foul called against Randall Falker will be his second. And Ryan Martin, only a 57% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Falker staying in at least for now. Let's see if Chris Lowry decides to sit him down for the last minute and 53 of the first half. And it looks as if Tony Boyle now at the scorer's table will come on. As you enjoy this chess match inside, one of the things that the Shockers can do successfully in this game is attack the offensive glass because Southern Illinois attacks the ball so much and they switch. There are a lot of gaps and seams you can get to the glass. A couple of misses. And the ball tipped out by Wilson. So Ryan Martin, who missed a dunk earlier, now misses a pair of free throws. He's leaving some points on the floor. And Wichita State needs him. You need every point you can get against the Salukis as Wichita State still hasn't cracked 20 here in the first half. Well, how about this? Those two free throws and a layup make it a six-point game, and it changes the whole complexion. And this is the type of game where when you lead by 10, it feels like games sometimes where you have a 15 to 20 point lead because it's so low scoring, Wichita State, you'd have to imagine it's going to have such, such a tough time just to get to 55 points today. Connecting is Tatum. And it's a 12 point lead. Nine minutes and 15 seconds worth of two field goal basketball for the Shocker. Wilson goes to the floor. He simply lost his balance. Good idea, though, to attack the lane. Randall Falker, the number one shot blocker in the MVC, is out with fouls right now. They need to do something to get that halftime momentum. Wilson, a kick out. Traveling call. They run Bradley. Shuffled his feet. In case you're wondering, the last three Saluki opponents are averaging 20 turnovers a game. They're very good stealing the ball. They play great pressure defense. They, they're like flies at a picnic. They're just all over. They're swarming and so active. Well, what also illustrates that is Wichita State only averages 11 and a half turnovers per game. Second fewest per game total in this conference. They have nine here in the first half. Wow. So they are already in danger of going way over their per game total. Mullins gets caught. And that shot partially blocks. Run down by Kuznar. Here's Aguirre. Aguirre gets bumped, no call. Aguirre drives. Kuznar from the corner. Short. Offensive rebound by Martin. Right back up. And he'll go back to the line. Ryan Martin's been active around the goal, and he works his way back to the free throw line. Now, the referees are allowing the players to be physical. That's a monumental advantage so far for Southern Illinois. It's the best thing they do. Ryan Martin the line. 
top two teams of the Big 12 on ESPN tonight. Texas A&M and Kansas, number eight, taking on number six. Coverage begins with College Game Day, driven by State Farm at 8 Eastern. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV on ESPN at 9 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. Sasha Khan and Jarrell Arthur have got to pick it up. Their play in the post has been a little bit erratic. That's the element that Bill Self is going to need if they're going to get off those first round NCAA losses. Well, that free throw for Martin was a long time in coming. 26% from the field in the first half for the Shockers. And 8 of 15, 53% at the line. Down to 10 seconds as Mullins will hold for one. Five seconds in the first half. Tatum, three seconds, rises and connects at the buzzer. Jamal Tatum with a tough baseline jumper. And it's a 13-point lead at halftime for Southern Illinois, led by Matt Shaw in the first half. But this, a tough hit for Tatum, who averages 14 and a half per game. So Jamal Tatum and Shaw helping Southern Illinois to a 13-point lead at halftime. Let's go back to our studio. College basketball presented by Cars.com, and we have a good one here in the Missouri Valley Conference in Wichita. The Shockers down by double figures to Southern Illinois at halftime, and we're about set for the start of the second half. Bob Shoes and Tim McCormick back here in Wichita, and at least from a defensive perspective, probably what we expected. Maybe we expected a closer game, although Wichita State showed that they have some fight in them towards the end of the first half. Bob, I thought it was an A-plus defensive first half. Chaos points disruptive. The Salukis were outstanding on that end of the court. Well, their top three scorers played like it in the first half. Ryan Mullins played playmaker, but it was Jamal Tatum, Matt Shaw, and Randall Falker that led the way. Yeah, and elite college teams all have three weapons in the first half. That terrific trio combined for 10 out of 13 shooting from the field. They scored 26 points, and, and their balance was just incredible. And I just think that when they play offense, they're, they're almost approaching unbeatable. Now, what are the, the three commandments defensively for Southern Illinois? The first is thou shalt not go in the paint. They really keep the defense on the perimeter. They pressure the ball, they attack. The second commandment, no dribble penetration allowed. They keep the Shockers on the perimeter nonstop. And as the ball goes in the post, it leads to the third defensive commandment, and that is this. Thou shalt commit shots. You gotta contest and force it over the top. It's a great defensive effort. And as a result, we start the second half with Wichita State having yet to reach 20 points in the game, and they turn it over to start the second half. So again, this is a team that averages only 11 and a half turnovers per game, and already they have nine turnovers, and that makes their 10th. And we have yet to play more than 21 minutes of basketball. And Falker right back inside as the game began. The second half begins, and he'll go back to the line. And now turn the nine into a 10 for turnovers for Wichita State. 62% is as strong as you're gonna find in this conference. 26 is like pitching a shutout in a game of baseball. And Falker talks about his free throws to us, how, how much he's struggling at the line. He said, <laughs> it's just really difficult on the road. They yell at you, it's really loud. And then you get home and the crowd's silent like they expect you to miss. Well, he threw it hard at that big white square, <laughs> knocked down the first. Then it seemed like he was afraid to hit the backboard with his second and barely grazed the front of the rim. <laughs> so one of two at the line for Falker. Who's Nard? Nice backdoor cut. And Ryan Martin converts. Pretty play. And Wichita State cuts the lead back to 12. First half. Tatum had 11. And Falker now with a free throw to start the second half has seven. Tatum down with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Tries to get into Falker and can't down the lane. Back out to Young. Extra pass to Shaw. And a nice wall off on the far side by Ryan Martin. Boxed out Falker beautifully. Hey! 
very strong passing game. But you can just tell there's no gaps to the rim. Everything is on the perimeter, and that's a testament to the contained principles. Martin shoves his way to the rim. And a foul call. And that foul will be called against Ryan Martin. And that's his third. So now Ryan Martin, who's probably been the most active front court player for the Shockers so far, forced to the bench. And let's see how long Mark Turgeon keeps him there with three fouls. Uh, if you look at the rebounding numbers for Southern Illinois, they're not very impressive, but I really like the job they do on the glass. Why? Well, because they play such a low possession game, the opponents don't take that many shots. They force a lot of turnovers, so that skews the defensive rebounding numbers. comeback when the Salukis take their time and are so poised with these long offensive possessions. And they'll take the shot clock all the way back down to 10 again. Mullins has it taken off his hip by Aguirre. It stays with the Salukis with eight seconds on the shot clock and just over two minutes gone by here in the second half in Southern Illinois. Shortening the game this way. As you said, it limits possessions. That 12-point lead looks a lot bigger. Young rises and connects. Well, they get great looks at the basket in spite of the fact that they take the shot clock down as deep as they do. Yeah, and to put it in Super Bowl principles, it's like a football team that has a great ground game. They keep running it, the clock is running, and the opponent has to have their offense sit on the bench. Very difficult to make those comebacks. Breyer works his way to the line. So Matt Breyer will shoot a pair. He had 10 points and five assists against UNI the other night, although the guards so far in this game have not done much for Wichita State. Yeah, I, I do like the Shocker guards a great deal, but they have not got it done in this game, and Matt Breyer is the secret star for this Wichita State team. He doesn't get a lot of credit because he's a simple, understated player, but I really enjoy the way he handles his team, getting people the ball. Uh, Kuznard is the, the guy that they need to get going, and the, the significant challenge is he has a, a dislocated thumb and a cast on it, so he's their best player, and because of that cast, he's not able to really get his game going. Well, Chris Lowry's most competitive and maybe nastiest player, Tony Young, is now back on the bench. He committed that last foul, so now he has three, and he sits down. Falker seals inside and scores. Oh, he got Thomason caught on his hip, and it's a 14-point lead for the Salukis. And this crowd, probably about as quiet as you can imagine it would be. Trying a deep three, Wilson, no good. Tatum has the rebound, and here comes Southern Illinois again. And again, very patient. Instead, Tatum now clear. A long rebound right back out to him. A fresh shot clock. Instead, he goes to the goal, and it's knocked away. What a steal. A great job by Matt Shaw to deflect the outlet pass. Tatum tied up, and they call a traveling violation. Well, that might get Chris Lowry deep out on the court. He looked like he was tied up, and there were hands on the basketball. Yeah, we had a good look at it. Excellent call by the officials. But on Wednesday night, Bob, you and I had a chance to watch Wichita State at their best at Northern Iowa. And this is not even the same team. They're playing very fast. They're, they're, they're just out of rhythm offensively. But when you're playing against a great defensive team, you get frustrated. Kuznard can't connect. And the Salukis with another rebound. They're winning the rebound battle, 18 to 15. They're winning the turnover battle. And they're winning the battle on the scoreboard by virtue of the fact that they are shooting 58% to the Shockers, 26%. Yeah. Another possession where the shot clock will be in single digits. They're just going to grind this game out. They've done enough work on the offensive end. They're going to win it with their D. On the baseline, Shaw. He misses. Thomason, the outlet, and here comes Breyer. Breyer right down the lane, high off the window, no good. An offensive rebound to Kuznard. He'll go back up and get to the line. There is a lid on the goal for Wichita State. Chris Lowry and Southern Illinois looking for their sixth consecutive trip to the NCAAs. 
That would tie a Missouri Valley record with a Hall of Famer. We'll explain in a moment. 14-point lead for Southern Illinois and Chris Lowry. College basketball presented by Cars.com. And Chris Lowry is a head coach and as an assistant, part of Southern Illinois' five straight trips to the NCAA tournaments. But Cincinnati is the only school in the history of the conference, a former conference member, to ever have gone six straight times. And who led them there most of those times? Well, it was Hall of Famer Oscar Robertson, part of a streak that extended from 1958 through 1963 and included national championships in 61 and 62. And the Big O still with a legacy at Cincinnati, but Chris Lowry trying to build his own legacy with Southern Illinois. And as an assistant to Bruce Weber before going to Illinois with Weber for a year, then coming back as an assistant and finally being hired as the head coach at Southern Illinois, Chris Lowry is already at 34 years of age starting to carve out a very nice niche for himself in the coaching community. Exactly, and when you talk about his success, you really have to give a lot of credit to his mentors, Bruce Weber, and also Matt Painter, who's currently the head coach at Purdue. Same style, attack the ball, protect the lane, one of the best help defensive squads you're gonna find anywhere. And a 12-point lead in a very difficult place to win. There's a good chance that the only tough, tougher place in the Missouri Valley Conference to win than this building is Southern Illinois' home gym. They put up amazing home numbers. They are 50 and one at home in their last 51 conference games. Couple of block shots by Wichita State. And B.J. Kuznar gets the crowd back into it here though at Coke Arena. Yeah, who's gonna score for Wichita State? Inside Thomason, off the backboard, no good, and the rebound to Falker. Well, there have been 10 different times that you can sense this building is ready to explode if Wichita State could just score a basket. And yet every single time, it seems the Saluki's gonna stop. Ryan Martin has three baskets, nobody else has even two. Another break up and a forced turnover. Bradley in transition, hangs, can't connect, but a foul call. And already you can see Wichita State off to as bad a start in the second half as they were to begin the game. Well, let's be realistic. Wichita State is not an athletic one-on-one -on -one team. They don't have a great post game. They rely on ball movement, screens, and sharing the ball. They're an assist turnover team. They, they need to be able to have 15 turnovers when they play their best ball. So far in this game, they have four assists and 10 turnovers. That's not gonna get it done. Thomason called for that last foul his second and the team's third and now this will be a backcourt violation Tatum went one way the pass went the other and a reminder coming up later on today regional coverage for college basketball on ABC starting at 3 30 Eastern you'll either see number three North Carolina and Tyler Hansbro taking on NC State or Kevin Durant and number 23 Texas taking on a resurgent Kansas State team this is a very big day for college basketball in this state and later on on ABC you'll see exactly that not only today do you have the Wichita State game which we're doing Kansas State later on playing Texas and tonight Kansas and Texas A&M in the Jayhawk State you can't ask for a much bigger day of college basketball than they have yeah how, how do you like Bob Huggins trying to hold things together when Billy Walker went down with that ruptured tendon I just I thought they would collapse but the future of K-State basketball is outstanding Wichita State is getting stops. They just can't score at the offensive end. Boyle comes up way short. On the end line was Falker. And defense has been the calling card, not only of the teams in the Missouri Valley Conference, but also of Kansas State. Look at the numbers that Bob Huggins has his team at the defensive end putting up. Well, they can stop a lot of people. I don't think that they can stop Kevin Durant, who I think is going to be the college player of the year. 
They better do it this year because you're not going to see them long. <laughs> They'll be wearing a Charlotte Bobcats uniform or some such jersey next year. How do you like this for a comparison? To me, I think that Kevin Durant is a lot like Tracy McGrady. Very much a long perimeter scorer that's going to get a lot better off the dribble. Wilson trying to get on track, comes up short. Boy, Kyle Wilson offensively has been very quiet. He has six points, one of five from the field. He's made it to the free throw line a few times. But averaging 15 points per game, he had 24 on the road the other night against Northern Iowa, and only six thus far with 12 and a half minutes to play here at home. You know, just so incredibly patient. I like a team that doesn't care who scores the points. They, they just know what their style is, and the way they're going right now, <laughs> you almost get the sense that, that they feel like, even if we don't score any more points, that we can stop Wichita State and still win this game. Tyrone Green tried to get a timeout and couldn't save it. Jamal Foster comes back on as Randall Falker sits down. Again, Falker had a stomach virus two days ago that, according to him, basically had him on his deathbed. He couldn't keep <laughs> anything down, was struggling with a fever. This morning, he was able to keep some food down and had some soup last night at dinner, had some fruit at granola bar this morning, got a good night's rest. But his minutes will most likely be limited. And when your team is holding the opposition at 25 points, Tim, you can buy your center some rest. Pulls up. It won't go in the basket for Wichita State. They can't buy a bucket. Yeah, I have to be honest. When I saw Southern Illinois last year, I thought, well, Chris Lowry's team's impressive, but he's winning with Bruce Weber and Matt Painter's players. I disagree with my original assessment. This is a guy that really understands how to teach defensive principles. They can test on the perimeter with their hands up. A three from Jamal Tatum. And this is the largest lead for Southern Illinois, pushed up to 15. And Mark Turgeon wants a timeout. 11.26 to go in regulation time. Wichita State with only 25 points on the board. A deep hole to dig out of. basketball presented by cars.com a 15 point lead for Southern Illinois and their leading scorer Jamal Tatum has 14 yeah. last year I thought Jamal Tatum over dribbled the basketball he has become much more efficient and he he told me today before the game that that his favorite player is Allen Iverson of the Denver Nuggets and he watches his games and he tries to emulate some of his moves but this is a kid that loves to win against Evansville earlier this year he had 29 points in the game and they lost a close one a heartbreaker and he was in the locker room in tears and I'm thinking that says a lot because when a guy scores 29 usually you'd say well, at least I got off today I'm okay but he really wants to win more than score 29. Wilson's three won't go Mullins has the rebound and Tatum for a moment something that Chris Lowry said which was interesting said he's just more comfortable in his own skin this year being a star last year he was put in a position where he needed to play like a star he was only a junior now he's a senior and he seems much more adept at handling all that goes along with being the focal point of the team which he is let me throw this out there 40 to 25 with the slow pace on offense and the great defense I don't think Wichita State can even get to 40 in this game. Made him again. This one caroms off. Green runs it down, calls timeout. And it is a timeout given to Southern Illinois. Tyrone Green, before he shuffled his feet, was able to call timeout. And it's a 30-second timeout. Let's take a look at the Missouri Valley Conference standings. And the thing that strikes me about these standings, Tim McCormick, every team in the conference is above 500. Look at down at the bottom. Drake plus one. And right now, number four overall in the RPI, you have seven teams in the top 90. And, and I can't figure out why the Salukis on the top with an 18 and five and 11 RPA. How in the world can they not be in the top 25 in the poll? In either poll. And you can see right now, in terms of the RPI, seven of the 10 teams are in the top 90 overall. And, and today on college game day, 
Our crew, Joe Lenardi and the guys had Missouri State as the last team into the NCAA tournament. So last year they were slighted. This year hoping to do a little bit better. An interesting point was actually made in a newspaper column around here. And I think it actually was a newspaper writer that covers Southern Illinois saying that there has never been a conference with a collective RPI in the top four or the top three whose top team didn't get a one or two seed wow, in the NCAA tournament. Now, could you imagine a team not even ranked right now in Southern Illinois if they were to make a nice run at the end of the season getting that type of respect? Because they're not getting it now. Five on the shot clock. Mullins has it stripped away by McHale. Ahead to Aguirre in a foul call. Mullins gave a quick foul and it was a smart one. Aguirre was breaking away. Southern Illinois with a 15-point lead midway through the second half. Back in Wichita. And with 10 minutes to go, the Shockers fans trying to maintain some hope. And they have not had much success. Smart Turgeon's club here at Coke Arena. In Wichita, trailing by double figures, Bob Oshusen and Tim McCormick watching another very spirited game in the Missouri Valley Conference. Four assists to 12 turnovers. Tim, not a good ratio. No, and Kyle Wilson, Sean O'Geary, and P.J. Kuznard are the best scorers for Wichita State. Each of them only has one basket each. This defense, if I had to pick a word, it would be stifling. Matt Shaw has come back on for Southern Illinois. O'Geary misses from behind the arc. Shaw was probably Southern Illinois' best player in the first half. He was on the bench for the last five and a half minutes, and during that five and a half minutes, the Salukis added three points to their lead. Yeah, I want you to look at that score again, 40 to 25. With the slow pace and the great defense, I don't think Wichita State can even get to 40 points in this game. Again, Southern Illinois takes the shot clock all the way down inside of 10 seconds. Mullins with five to shoot, working on McHale. Off a of curl, Tatum gets another good look with three seconds on the shot clock. I can't remember seeing a team so efficient offensively. I can. Dallas Mavericks, San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Wilson can't get free inside. Yeah, with the left hand does and a chance for a three-point play. That's the first impactful moment of the game for Kyle Wilson. Now speaking of Dallas Mavericks, here is the Dirk Nowitzki look-alike with a beautiful post move. And that's the kind of action they needed early in this game. Once again, offensively, Mark Turgeon has to be frustrated with the inconsistency on the offensive end. They started out 9-0, number eight in the country, and then over a 20-day period, they lost eight games. And so they're capable of some fireworks, but also some long drops. Off a made basket, a chance for Wichita State to create some backcourt pressure. And Mark Turgeon thought that Jamal Tatum took an extra step. Might have been right. Shaw, he can shoot the three. That ball deflected and recovered by Mullins. Again, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Five to shoot. Tatum's gonna have to put it up. It's blocked by Kuzno. Loose and a foul call. The foul called on Jamal Tatum. That's his first, and the sixth team foul against Southern Illinois. Look at the out-of-conference wins for Wichita State. At LSU, at Syracuse, Creighton, very good. How about also George Mason, Wyoming? This is a team that has been wildly erratic in their performance, and Mark Turgeon, after the Northern Iowa game on Wednesday, said that he really felt like his team was playing their best ball, and they were capable of even getting better. He has to be perplexed. Freedom drives, misses everything. Wilson, the offensive rebound, Strip away and with 19 seconds on the shot clock it stays with the Shockers although Wichita State has won three in a row after a stretch where they had lost eight of 11 and this game starts a three game homestand for them they played seven of 11 January games on the road Wilson in traffic again can't get it to go the tip though from Kuzno that's five straight points for Wichita State some life breathed back in the game. They're down by 12. 
with the precision of a surgeon, the way they carve up the pressure. The idea is that Wichita State wants to use that press to speed them up. It's not working. Falker fouled by Freedom had no choice but to give the contact. So Randall Falker goes to the line when we come back. Southern Illinois' lead has been cut to 12 with 7.44 remaining. Scott, thanks very much. College basketball presented by Cars.com here at Wichita. 12-point lead for Southern Illinois. And bracket busters only a couple of weeks away. And you'd have to say, Tim McCormick, that Southern Illinois probably plays the game of bracket busters against the 11th ranked team at Butler. That is going to be a great game. Oh, and the guard play for Butler is just tremendous. I talked to Kelvin Sampson, the Indiana coach, earlier this year, and he said that the best guards that he's faced all year were Butler. So I, I think that that'll be a, a really good test. But the, the bracket buster ha has really benefited the Missouri Valley Conference more than anybody else. The chance to get this exposure versus really good teams. and. There's Falker. What a what a good player he is. And not just the exposure, the wins. Yep. This conference every year has not only played in bracket busters, and it's only a couple of years old, but they have won big games. And that has certainly helped the collective RPI of the conference and has bolstered the resume of Missouri Valley Conference teams that probably don't get as much respect as they deserve when they try and put together their case to make the tournament. Breyer, there was some contact inside, no call. And Wichita maintains possession with 18 on the shot clock. Yeah, I would anticipate a little bit of a letdown defensively for Southern Illinois. They have been playing at, at maximum efficiency for this entire game. I just don't know if they're going to be able to keep it up. I think that Wichita State can find some open shots in this offense right now. McKell on the baseline. No. And the weak side rebound pulled down by Matt Shaw. Your question still stands with 7.15 to go. Can Wichita State get into the 40s? Player of the year in the Valley. I think you have to go with Randall Falker at this point, wouldn't you think? Third leading rebounder in the conference. That pass deflected. Shaw tracks it down. Tatum in a scramble with McKell. Three on the shot clock. McKell takes it away and is fouled in the backcourt. And that will put McKell at the line. That's the seventh team foul against the Saluki. As we check our stat track. Shooting percentages still for the game, only 23% for the Shockers. And their guards have been a non-factor. Now even in turnovers. But it's hard to get past the shooting percentages, Tim, when you look at the scoreboard. Yep. 23 degrees outside ice cold, 23% inside ice cold. Dal McCall, an interesting story. A freshman from Tel Aviv who actually was found by an NBA scout. Scott Spinelli, who's an assistant to Mark Turgeon, had a buddy who was scouting for NBA talent in Israel. And he saw Gal McKell as a teenager and called back to Scott Spinelli. Said, I know you're looking for a point guard. I think I might have someone for you. And without having even seen him, he comes to Wichita State on that recommendation. Mark Turgeon is saying, you know, it's just funny where you find players. Traveling call in the backcourt. A chance for Wichita State to pull back within 10, possibly not. And, and let's keep an eye on the Saluki defense. Can they maintain a 40-minute effort of maximum toughness on the defensive end? Not many teams can do it. I think the Shockers can find some holes in that defense now as they get a little bit tired defensively. Guznard looks to penetrate. Rises. Gets the roll. And it's a 10-point game with six and a half minutes to play. And here comes the backcourt pressure again. Shaw catches in a tough spot, slips it nicely, though, through to Tyrone Green. Now Green picks up his dribble, and a foul call. This will go against K. Run Bradley. Mark Turgeon deserves some credit right now because his defense, the full court pressure, seems to give them a little boost in the scoring department, but I, I just get the sense that once again, Southern Illinois is going to take the air out of the ball and run a long possession. Brad 
Barkley's second foul, only the fifth on the team. Another shot clock under 10 seconds, I would anticipate. That's a 23 now. Let's see how patient Southern Illinois is in this possession and how they maintain their patience with the crowd as much a factor now as they have been all afternoon. And there it is, down to 10. Tatum, way outside, hit the backboard first. Here comes Breyer. Down low, Kuznar. And Kuznar again, double team. Breyer for three. Yeah, I noticed a little slippage defensively by the Salukis, and the Shockers are capitalizing. Now, what's the response on the other bench? This is a possession where Randall Falker needs to get a touch in the post. Not necessarily as a scorer, but he's a big guy that can create opportunities for his teammates. You're going to see a possession, once again, with the shot clock under 10 seconds, but Falker needs the touch. Haven't you noticed that Chris Lowry, after timeouts, always seems to get his big guy the ball in the low post? Well, Chris Lowry, in talking about Falker, said that he's really made himself into a tremendous player. He's improved himself physically, mentally. He's worked on his hand skills around the rim. And he said, even though Jamal Tatum is the star, lately, to get back on track, Randall Falker is the player that Southern Illinois has been going through. That's according to the head coach. He's trying to get a seal in the post. Had position on Wilson, but Shaw didn't throw the entry pass. Yeah, he's going to get the ball because you can see them really looking for him hard. Ten on the shot clock. Sets a screen and rolls to the goal. Tatum holds on to it. Back outside for a Shaw three. What a big shot. Southern Illinois back to a double-digit lead as Matt Shaw hits the triple. Penetrates, almost slipped with the left hand. Pretty move by Kieran Bradley, the transfer from Marquette. And Falker may have been poked in the eye. The officials call time. And Falker gets a little bit of a rest, again playing after being laid up with a stomach virus the past two days. Now, all he had for breakfast was some fruit. He has to be worn out. Here's the pressure, and Young gets it across the timeline. Picks up his dribble with a double team. Four minutes and 20 seconds to go. This is razor sharp offense with the game on the line. They pass up shots to get the really good one late. Seven seconds on the shot clock again. Ball deflected inside. Wilson knocked it away. Kuznar the outlet. Here's Bradley with the left hand again. Plus the foul. Kron Bradley a chance for a three-point play, and he could cut it to six. Down to five, possibly with a free throw. The run is on here in Wichita, and they are going crazy at Coke. Scott, we have that and then some college basketball presented by Cars.com, and all of a sudden it's tightened up a six-point lead for Southern Illinois. Uh, the quick hitter in transition is critical because they can't score against this half-court defense by Southern Illinois. Watch you notice the speed going out in transition is Karen Bradley, who grew up in Houston and had a chance to play against T.J. Ford and John Lucas Jr. You see the numbers, how they've exploded over the last five minutes. He said playing against really quick players like that when he was in high school has made it so much easier in the battle. It's a Wichita State. 
30 minutes to score 25 points. They've got 17 points over the last five and a half minutes. And it's a five-point game with under four to go. Well, I said in the open that I promised a close game. It took us 36 minutes for that to come true. Well, this Southern Illinois team has won a lot of games, 18 and 5. And they routinely put up 20 win seasons. Every now and then, if you're going to win 20 games, you get through games like they have right now. And again, the Salukis take the shot clock down to six. And knocking it down is Tatum. That is a big shot from your star guard. Breyer right back down the other way. Rejected. Falker comes over and throws it out. And here comes Tatum in the front court. And he waits for help. And we've got an injured player for Wichita State, and that is Matt Breyer. Uh, what a defensive sequence by Randall Falker. Wow, the number one shot blocker in the conference, and I'm sorry, I know he got it up top, but there was a lot of contact down below. I think this has to be a foul, not because of what happened up top, but because of the follow through. It seemed as if maybe on the collision in the fall, Breyer hit his head on the court. It was hard to tell from either of those camera angles that they are holding his head. We'll try and check on the status of Matt Breyer. Obviously, Mark Turgeon is concerned. A reminder, two of the top teams of the Big 12 battle tonight on ESPN. AC Law and Texas A&M. The eighth-ranked Aggies go to Kansas to meet the Jayhawks and Brandon Rush. Coverage begins with college game day driven by State Farm at 8 Eastern. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV on ESPN at 9 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. And entering today, two of the top four scoring margin teams in the country playing tonight, Texas A&M and Kansas. I, I love the story today. I was watching my favorite television show, College Game Day, and they told the story about when Billy Gillespie was a young man, Bill Self was, was already an established coach at Tulsa, and he needed to borrow some money because the place, the, the restaurant he was at did not take credit cards, and he asked Billy Gillespie if he could borrow some money. Gillespie said no, and then he ended up hiring him and, and coaching as an assistant or Bill Self, not only at Tulsa, but at Illinois, so they've got a, a wonderful relationship, and, and it should be just a fantastic game. I love the defense that, that Billy Gillespie's team brings, and, and at the end of the season, if what happens in the tournament with Texas A&M, which I would anticipate to be a lot of success, I think that Billy Gillespie is going to be a big-time candidate someday for, for a major, major. I'm not talking about a good college team. I'm talking about really big-time. He is a future star. Well, he resurrected UTEP in about one year. And in one year, went to College Station and resurrected Texas A&M. And a nice hand for Matt Breyer as the fans see him get up and sit up and now stand. And he is woozy. Well, it's hard to explain to folks around the country that live in big cities how when you come to a college town, the kinship that the fans feel towards the players and how the community rallies around the team the way that they will in a place like Wichita for Wichita State. This is the pro program. This is what the town stops to watch. And it is a very tight-knit community. And there was not much noise in this building while Matt Breyer was on the deck. Coming up on three minutes to go. And Wichita State desperately needs a stop. Walker double team. Mullins watches the shot clock click down to 10 once again. The six to shoot. Mullins on the baseline, picks up his dribble, forces it up, and he stepped into bounds. Turns it over. Yeah. I have to be honest, I, I do appreciate the razor-like precision of working the shot clock down below 10. But at times, you're really putting yourself in a tough position to get stagnant on offense and to not get good shots. That has really been one of the keys that has fueled this Wichita State comeback. There's no margin for error. You take the shot clock down inside of seven over and over again as Bradley attempts and Shaw has the rebound. 
It's basically one shot per possession. Well, it does make sense, though, that as the shot clock gets under 10, the Wichita State defense gets even more focused because they know it's time to defend a shot. Walker double teams. And again, Wichita State trying to get a stop, and again, Southern Illinois patient. Rising is Tatum. Can't connect. And the rebound off to Kuznar. Under two minutes to play. Shockers down by five, and a timeout called by Mark Turgeon. It's a 30-second timeout with 1.52 to go. As Philip Thomason will come back on. If you're looking for a key player as you check out the reset, two timeouts each, Sean O'Geary is a player that has been held down four points, one out of three from the field. He might be their most talented overall offensive player, and, and I just feel like he's going to be a guy that is going to have to find some space to get one of his shots. Well, Wichita State has a foul to give and the possession arrow, and against Southern Illinois tied with Creighton at the top of the Missouri Valley Conference. Wichita State, the common line of thinking, Tim, is that they basically need to run the table to get an at-large bid. If they lose any more conference games, then they would most likely have to run the table in the conference tournament and get the automatic bid. Wright State and Detroit coming up right after we're done here at Wichita. But even though that's the common line of thinking, I have a hard time believing that they can't afford one more conference loss for a conference that's fourth overall in the yeah, RPI. That's true. Very good point. I mean, if you're fourth in the RPI, basically what those ratings are telling you is that it's harder to win games in this conference than it is in the Big East. Bradley comes up short, and the rebound pulled down by Tatum underneath, and he is fouled, and now Southern Illinois is very close to putting this one on ice. Now, seven points is not a lot. And one of the, the significant challenges, though, Breyer is out. He took that hard foul that wasn't called against Falker. But they are going to have to really speed this pace up because as long as Southern Illinois is able to run 35 seconds off the shot clock, th this is basically a two-possession game. You can make an argument if Southern Illinois gets the ball in the front court twice without putting up a shot. They can take a minute and 10 seconds off of the last 90 seconds of the game. The ball poked out by Bradley. Again here at Coke Arena in Wichita. And it is a good matchup between Southern Illinois and Wichita State. Papa Shusen and Tim McCormick with you. And right after we're done here at Wichita, more college basketball here on ESPN2. Wright State and Detroit on deck. Falker in the post, double team, kicks it to the corner. Three on the shot clock, Mullen shot his feet. Offensively, Southern Illinois, their strategy has worked because they have a position to win this game, but they, they really have gotten very stagnant. Uh, if you're Wichita State, no matter what happens after this possession, whether you score or not, you probably have to foul. I mean, can you afford to continually let the Salukis take 35 seconds off with the shot clock? That was the last possession that they will do that in. And I know they'll they'll try to get the ball in Falker's hands because he's the guy you want to put at the line. Wilson penetrates, contact, and he'll go to the line. Falker called for the foul. That's his fourth. And how about the minutes that Randall Falker has given his team today? We were told by the Southern Illinois staff that he might not be able to play the normal number of minutes that he usually plays, but for the most part, I mean, he has given them starters minutes today in spite of battling a stomach flu the last two days well, the good thing is that yesterday he had a chance to practice and, and for just him being out there you knew he was feeling good enough the flu is only going to linger for a short period of time and I thought that that he has not scored a lot but he has initiated their offense by drawing double teams every time he touches the ball it's an all-out assault defensively to get the ball out of his hands that's the reason that, that Tatum and some of the teammates are getting open shots Right. Two had to have free throws for Kyle Wilson, and it's a five-point game, 53 seconds to go. 
Let's see what Wichita State does. If they don't get the steal in the backcourt, do they foul? Yes. Tatum, fouled by Aguirre. 44 seconds remaining. And that is the 17 foul. Wright State and Detroit in just a moment. And in terms of team fouls, probably the perfect scenario for Wichita State. That's number seven, which means seven, eight, and nine. You create a one and one. So Tatum needs to hit this free throw. 78% at the line. And you like veteran players. He's played in a lot of big games, Bob. Can't connect. He misses the front end. Wichita State with some light. Dribbles into a tough area of the court, but a foul called on Mullins. Uh, Going after the loose ball, that'll put Thomason at the line. And the clock is stopped. Mark Turgeon can talk some strategy with his guards and make sure they're getting their defense set up. Right now he's saying, okay, we're going to attack, we're going to go for steals, and then we're going to foul once they get over half court. I think either... Rather than wait till they get out over half court, I think they should foul immediately, especially after Tatum missed the front end of a one and one. Thomason, only a 46% free throw shooter, misses the first. That was the 10th team foul against Southern Illinois. So the rest of the way, Wichita State shoots the double bonus. One of two at the line for Philip Thomason. He checks out quickly back in. Is Wendell Freedom. 33 seconds remaining, and again the full court press set up with Wright State and Detroit only moments away. Shaw caught in the corner. Foul. Matt Shaw is an 83% free throw shooter. His third. As Bradley gives up the foul for Wichita State. And look at their season average and what they have today. Tough. Well, we didn't know if they'd get to 40 points, and, and it's it's a combination. The Salukis are very strong defensively, one of the best in college basketball, but their slowdown pace also helps those scoring numbers. This is a one and one, and Shaw rolls home the front end. He's been solid today, now with 13 points, perfect at the line. Ryan Martin comes back on for the Shockers, and now Chris Lowry's going to empty out his group, send them back towards midcourt. And get them ready for transition defense. So it's a lot of yellow jerseys surrounding Matt Shaw at the line. Comes up short. Only one of two. It's a five-point game. Where's O'Geary? Wilson has to put it up. That misses badly. Falker the rebound. And he's fouled by Kuznar. What? what a manly rebound by Falker. There were eight guys in the paint that all went up for it, and all of a sudden you see this hand come out of nowhere and snatch the ball. Here's why I think he's the MVP of this conference. First of all, he's going to score 13 points a game, but the other numbers really impress me. He's number three rebounding the ball. He's the top shot blocker. He shoots 60%, and he is the one most unguardable big guy. I know that Tolliver is really good at great, so is Coleman and NIU. This guy is the man. Chris Lowry yesterday at shoot-around gathered his team around and compared last year to this year for Southern Illinois. On February 1st last year, Southern Illinois was 16 and 5. This year they're 18 and 5. They finished off last season 6 and 6 and were knocked out of the NCAA tournament in the first round as Bradley is fouled and he'll go to the line. And it's interesting, coming up on what we now know as rivalry week this week for ESPN, that's exactly the message Chris Lowry said to his team. He said, guys, all the rivalries now happen. Duke and North Carolina are playing this week. This is the month that you win your conference tournament championship if you're going to step up and win it. He said, we're in the same position we were in last year. We're 16 and 5. What do you want to do? And there was not a sound while he was giving so, sounds that, very uh, mo motivational. Yeah, when he was giving that speech, there was not a sound among his team as Falker fouls out. He has certainly done his work today. 
and Bradley can't convert at the line. But if you're looking for the stepping off point for that late season run for Southern Illinois, it'd be hard to find a better stepping off point than a road win at Wichita State. Uh, also, after hearing that great motivational speech, Bob, your game has really elevated today. <laughs> I would say when I work with a big man of your caliber, it can't go anywhere really but down. <laughs> I'm not sure as Kuznar gives the foul. So Mullins goes to the line. Six point game with 7.6 seconds to go and they give out the foul actually to Mikel. Now, but his team came out and responded today. Yeah, I, I just, I, I really thought that, that what we've seen here is Southern Illinois come into a hostile environment and they played like a veteran team powered by juniors and seniors. They have big game experience. They have NCAA expectations. With an RPI of 11, this is one of the top five defensive teams that I've seen all year. So Southern Illinois is about to win a big one here on the road. The final seconds tick off at Coke Arena. And the three-game winning streak for Wichita State has been snapped. The final score, 54-46, Southern Illinois over Wichita State. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. College basketball action continues now. Detroit, Michigan is the site as Wright State and Detroit square off. For the call, we head to Bob Valvano.